for having me here today. Uh, my name is Danielle Ernst and I am from Cheyenne, Wyoming. I went to Central High School and I graduated in 2019. Um, since then, I've come to UW and I've really enjoyed myself here. So it's been super exciting. Thank you, Danielle. And then Cole. Cole, could we ask you to unmute and please introduce yourselves? Uh, so, uh... Yeah, my name's Cole. I'm originally from Cody, Wyoming. I uh, went through Cody High School. Uh, I graduated in 2018. Since I've been out, I've been kind of all around. Um, I actually went to Northwest College for a year to go uh, attempt at a business degree. Um, while there, I was playing for the Yellowstone Quakes NA3 hockey team. Um, after that, I ended up coming down here, spent a year working, and then now I'm at Wyo Tech, and I've been enjoying myself here and working. I'm about a month away from graduating from this school to go uh, continue my career down in Texas. Thank you, Cole. And then Abby, Abilene, Filio. I received, I was able to see a letter that you wrote back to your high school, thanking them for some of the preparation. And I thought, what a great voice to hear from today. So Abilene. Uh, um, I wrote to Miss Garcia Clapp, Mrs. Garcia Clapp and Mr. Sennett, my former English teachers. Um, and Miss Garcia Clapp was my track coach as well. Um, I graduated from Wind River High School in 2019. Um, I then came to Casper College where I started studying for business admin and I am in my second year. I should graduate here in the spring um, and I, I work full time at Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's an insurance company um, and I really enjoy that as well. So that's kind of what I've been doing. Thank you, Abilene. And then Aubrey My name is Aubrey Ann Crosby and I'm from Cowley, Wyoming. I graduated from Rocky Mountain High School in 2020 and I currently attend Northwest College on the volleyball team and I'm going after a degree in business and agriculture. Thank you so much. You know each of you have a story to tell and an experience to tell that's going to be so beneficial for this board. It's they are valuable stories, valuable information as the board continues its work and we thank you. With that, I'm gonna pass it back to Chairman Furman to see if you would um, pose some of the questions that we have for our panelists this morning. Sure, and I just wanna welcome you again and, and you know, you sat through some of that formal board stuff, but, but we're an informal board of, of largely educators or, or other people who really care about hearing from you. So I, I hope you, uh, we're able to have a good conversation and that you feel free to just to just talk because we're eager to hear from you. And so what I'm curious is, as you are all after high school, what are some of the challenges that you faced or, or difficulties as you started at a community college or the university or, or anything that after high school you felt was a challenge or you were maybe underprepared for? I would say my biggest issue was um, kind of like broadening my horizons after graduating from Cheyenne and all of my friends going to the same exact college that I went to. Um, it was hard for me to like get out of my box and, you know, get involved in new things. Um, kind of just finding different experiences, which is something I definitely had to learn to do. Mm hmm. What, what helped you get out of your box then? What were some of those? Um, I had a pre-med advisor. Um, he's kind of scary, honestly. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> um, but he was basically like, well, you're not going to medical school if you don't do these extra things. So you really need to do them or you're stuck. So, <laughs> yeah. So are you still looking at pre-medical or that pathway? Yes, yes sir. Okay. You don't have to call me, sir. I appreciate it, though. I'm, I'm a junior high science teacher by trade, so. All right, do I have to call, call anybody? Um, that was a pun. Uh, something right, that thanks. I kind of noticed, especially from Cody, um, a lot of the things uh, in that school, they kind of baby the kids through it, I would almost say. I mean, they're really lenient about letting kids get stuff in late and helping them through a lot of extra stuff. And when you get out and... Uh, college and working in a real job I mean especially here it's 
you get it done on time, you need to have it right. And if it's not, I mean, you fail and that's just how it goes. And that's something that a lot of kids, especially in this generation coming out of college, they're not ready to accept that life's going to hit you like a bus. And it's kind of something to be a little bit more prepared for when you're coming out. Abilene, would you agree with that? I saw you shaking your head. Yes. Yeah, I definitely would agree that some leniency in high school kind of really kicked you in the butt when you came into college, um, especially when you're trying to figure out your priorities, um, especially with leniency, leniency in school. Uh, I work full time and I absolutely love my job. And because of that, it's hard for me to prioritize my school um, because I'm, I'm working and I'm working in a place where I'd like to stay. Um, so it's really hard to stay um, really involved and persevere through school when I'm, I've been at school for a long time and I'm excited to graduate and kind of move on. So it's, it's definitely uh, something you kind of have to motivate yourself in um, that we kind of lacked in high school at times. So I would agree definitely that leniency kind of kicked us in the butt when it kind of came to college. Arbor Ann, would you concur then? Yeah, I think it's a it's a fine line because you want to make sure that kids are still learning and they're not just failing because they didn't try. You want to make sure they know the materials and stuff. So I think it's you have to figure out how to do that, but also make sure that they know they need to get stuff in on time and everything. Um, I think one thing for me was just my career options once I left high school. Um, I didn't know all that was out there and just all the different majors that I could choose from and stuff. So. Um, I think a challenge for me is choosing what to do, and I think it would have been nice to learn more of that, of how to pick a career and how to find different options while I was in high school. That's a really interesting point. I'm, I'm kind of curious how you guys all ended up on the pathway that you currently are on. How did you arrive at? Um, actually, I'd love to reflect on this. Uh, I went to Northwest, as I said earlier, for a year to attempt a business degree. Um, at that same time, I was playing NA3 Junior, so it was kind of hard to balance both of them. Um, but if I'm being honest, I did an internship like my senior year of high school because I thought real estate was my thing. Um, I took personal finance classes. I went all in on business because I really thought that's what I was going to do. And I got into college, and if I'm being honest, I absolutely hated it from day one. It was just not my thing. I, uh, I, I couldn't do it, especially balancing it with hockey. It's just not where my mind was or where my motivation was. Getting out and going to Wyotech. I mean, my outlet's always through my whole life. I mean, whenever anything got hard, mad, sad, I'd always go work on my truck or my car because it's something that I can, it's always there. It's something you can kind of get your stress out with. And when I came here, it's like, I wanted to be here. I loved being here every second and it made taking in information a lot better. So I think something to make sure kids at graduating high school know is just honestly following something you love. I mean, even if it's not, when I was in high school, I looked as a technician as like, I don't want to be a greasy guy working in a shop all day. I, I, I didn't look at it as in, there's something I love. I mean, I'm not working in a dealership. I'm doing, I'm building custom cars. I'm doing stuff that I love to do that I can put my pride and work into. And no matter how much money you make, I personally think as long as you're doing something that you can enjoy every day, loving and doing, it makes life a lot easier. It makes wanting to do the work a lot better. I think that's real wise, Cole. In Cody, did you were you part of the CT&E program that involved an option to, or you just fully didn't think that was going to be a pathway for you, so you didn't investigate it? I did not investigate. Okay, so it wasn't until community college when you realized that your passion was probably more working on, on your cars then. Yeah, I mean, I knew I loved it a lot, but I really, I, I kind of just looked at my job, especially being a kid, you look at a job and it's kind of like how people are going to see you when you tell them what type of job you have. You don't want to tell them you're a greasy mechanic. I mean, you want to tell them it's something cool. And that's kind of how I saw it as a kid. And I didn't really want to open up my mind to anything else and realize, you know, not really giving a crap what people think and going in about what you really care about, what you want to do and love. I mean, I don't know. I guess it was just growing up and learning the hard way is the way I've always kind of had to do it. So it was just part of it going to Northwest and having to learn that. I mean, it's something I loved. It was something I was good at. I mean, I really did enjoy the business classes. I just, it was definitely not my thing. I did not want to be there every day for sure. Gotcha. I have a couple of trustees that want to jump in on the conversation. So I'm going to turn this over to Debbie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Cole, I 
curious, did you feel a pressure to go to a secondary school to a college or a university or was it just honestly in your mind? No, um, I, my family, um, I come from a family that one side is doctors that have their own practice down in Southern California that went to school for 12 years. And the other side is um, a bunch of rednecks from the South that just had the best work ethic that if you needed help, they'd be the people to be there the first in line. And they had the best work ethic. They just taught me hard work will get you what you want. And they're the ones that, I mean, they kind of gave me the mindset that when I got out of high school, it's my choice. I mean, if I wanted to go drive a big rig every day, I could, as long as I'm happy with what I'm doing. I mean, it's never been a pressure. It's been myself for sure, wanting to do better, wanting to achieve more and wanting to go to that school. And that's probably why I wanted to push towards college with me pushing myself. But in all honesty, I never really had the pressure of you need to go to college, you need to do a secondary school. It's as long as you put in the work ethic and you go after what you love, you can probably make it happen. Was that a message at all you, you got at high school or is that was coming strictly from your family? That's from family. I mean, high school, every teacher is going to be like college, they're not going to do this. And they obviously push college. But I mean, I had some really good people around me. My uh, Some of my best teachers I had, my math teacher, Mr. Brinegar and Cody, he was absolutely amazing. He was the first person to tell me, he's like, look, dude, if you want to go to college, it, I mean, it does help. It looks good. But you don't have to. I mean, they'll tell you that it's probably a way to go and it does help when you want to get a job, but they're also the ones that tell you that you got to do what you love. And if it's just not for you, it's not for you. College is not for everybody. Thank you. Trustee Breen, I see you have an additional question you'd like to ask. Thank you, Chairman Furman. Uh, to, 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 uh, to the panelists, by the way, Danielle, I taught at Cheyenne Central for 24 years. So, uh, I, I, you know, I, I I had many, many seniors. And so my question here is a really general one for, for you panelists, because particularly getting to uh, February and March of the senior year, not only did I see my seniors get really clouded over, right, like they couldn't wait to get the heck out of school. They, they had it by that time. It was probably the most difficult time to teach was dealing with seniors between March and when they released. But one of the things that I did notice was there was also anxiety sitting in. And, you know, you walked across that stage in late May or early June. Was there anything in your minds as you cross that stage, received that diploma, that in the back of your mind, you were saying, I wished that I would have been finished the sentence. that sentence um <laughs> it's like going across the stage i wish i would have man i really wish i would have been more myself and done my what i wanted to do <laughs> um i don't think i really had any idea what i wanted to do until i was a senior um i had the idea but i wasn't i wasn't prepared yet um until my senior year, about halfway through, when it act like like you said, um, seniors are kind of really hard to to wrangle up and get to pay attention. We're hard those last couple of months, extremely as being one of them. Um, I kind of felt myself doing that in the beginning of my senior year, um, but towards the end, actually, I felt more confident and ready and excited to leave because I was prepared um, and I wanted to be prepared. And that was honestly all because of a couple of classes at my high school. Um, the year before I was a senior, M Melinda Garcia and um, Mr. Senate started a capstone class. And that was strictly to prepare us for after high school. Um, we had to do a 30 minute presentation at the end of the year. Um, and what we did, we had interviews with people in the fields that we wanted to be in. We um, we job shadowed. We made we made interviews. We did all different kinds of stuff. So we were able to figure out what we wanted to do. And honestly, that was the coolest thing ever because there were some people that had no idea what they wanted to do by senior year. But by working with our teachers and with each other, we were able to find a career path for like that we might be interested in. We were able to think about that before we got let out. Um, and that's great that that was an option because. Um, 
I know kids in my class and in the class before um, thought they knew what they wanted to do. And then partway through that capstone class, realized that's not actually what they wanted to do because they got to go interview, they got to go job shadow and they got to realize maybe that's not what I want to do. And they were able to switch. So they were able to find out what they wanted to do for sure, even if they had to switch before we were even let go. Um, and honestly, yes, being anxious because you're about to graduate, you're about to go off to college, you're about not to live at home, um, you're done with sports. It's kind of like your last hoorah. I've never felt more confident leaving a grade or a school because because of that opportunity that that capstone class gave me. Um, and, I, and I took it and I took it and I used it in college. Um, I wanted, my mom is a Farm Bureau agent in Riverton. And as soon as she got that job, I was interested and hooked. Um, so I knew that's kind of what I wanted to do. And that's what my capstone project was about was becoming an insurance agent and kind of going into that field. Um, and through me being a college kid and doing stupid college kid things, I needed to get a job, um, I needed money. And using my capstone class and the resources I had, I got a job here at the Casper Farm Bureau office um, and I still work there. So I've been there for a year and a half. So almost ever since I started college. Um, and honestly, and I'm comfortable and I'm very happy and I never would have been uncomfortable and prepared for that position and for that job and for that step in my life without that class because I probably could have done it um, because my mom's an agent and everyone in Wyoming knows my mom um, through association and she definitely helped but I definitely did some stuff on my own and that's why I'm still there. Um, so. Yes, it was really hard to concentrate those last couple of months, but I was more prepared than ever. And that's something I would not trade for anything else. Aubrey Ann, how about you? Did, did you have an opportunity in high school to think about your ultimate career or, or how you were prepared to make those choices? So I actually was super involved with the FBLA program, the Future Business leaders of America. And that's how I got really interested into business. I started mainly because my sister was a part of it a few years before me. And I knew she got to go on some cool trips to their national conferences. So that's really why I was doing it at first. But as soon as I got involved, I really loved all the different activities and competitions you could be a part of. So that's what really got me interested in business. And then I've grown up on a cattle ranch here. So I love ag too. And once I got to college, I knew I wanted to be in business, but take some ag classes to learn more in the classroom um, in that sense. And so now I've gotten really interested in economics and I don't really know what pathway I wanna take with that, but I know the general area I wanna study and stay in business and ag, so. Danielle, what, what about you? Um, honestly, I was given a lot of opportunities in high school that I am very thankful for. And a lot of people, especially my teachers that influenced me in very positive ways. Um, when I first went into high school, I kind of tested the waters on a whole bunch of different classes. I took intro to business, intro to healthcare careers, um, a lot of the little bit of chorus theater, like those kind of courses too. But, um, I was really influenced by my intro to healthcare careers teacher about like the millions of healthcare careers that you can choose. Like it's, you're not just stuck to being a doctor or stuck to being a nurse or like what you wanna be, but like you can be a surgeon and you can be a specific type of surgeon and you can do these cool things. And so I think that was definitely part of my influence. Um, this is gonna sound kind of funny, but it was actually like my calculus teachers in high school. Um, they were a mother-daughter duo, um, the Eisenhards. They were some of the biggest influences on my high school experience yes. to really push me into- oh, Kate, Kate, I think. Or maybe Kate, maybe Kate, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> really pushed me into being what I wanted to be. Um, definitely huge motivators and they challenged us um, to kind of push ourselves to learn more about ourselves and how we are as learners and kind of that pushed me into the direction that I went into. So we've talked a lot about kind of career choices. Um, 
obviously one of the other goals we have as an education system is to prepare you to be citizens and contributing members of both state and community. How, how has uh, your experience in high school prepared you as you've left high school to participate in, your, in the bigger world that you find yourselves in? I think I can answer that one. Um, I was a part of the National Honor Society um, in high school, and I think that was a big step in preparing me for being like a good community member and learning more about um, being involved in your community and kind of how like that impacts you as a person um, as far as like community service goes, stuff like that. Um, so I think that was a huge thing. And it also pushed me to like learn more about that in college. So now that I'm here, I've joined like a sorority and have done community service through those sorts of things. So I think that was one of like the big parts in college or in high school that prepared me to do that in college and beyond. was involved in FFA um, ever since eighth grade year. Um, I feel like being involved in FFA, especially in a small chapter like I was in in the 2A school, we were really involved into the in the community because everybody knew everybody and we even knew everybody from the fault of surrounding towns, which is kind of a small area. Um, and through FFA, we also did stuff like community service. We did like auctions where we would um, kind of sell our services for a day if someone needed help picking up pipe or who, whatever, babysitting their kids, um, doing kind of whatever. So we did, we did that. Um, but it made you really involved and really appreciate what kind of is going on. And then you knew what was going on with everybody on their ranch and, um, and all your community members in general. And that's really important, especially when you need support or want support or want help or anything the more involved that you are, um, the better that that is. Um, and then lots of my friends are involved in the ag community here at college um, in Casper. I, I think I'm the only person in my friend group who's not taking ag business. Um, and they are super, super involved in the community here as well. They do all different kinds of fun stuff here. They have sales here at our ag pavilion for livestock. Um, they really fundraise for all different kinds of trips that they do. They do all different kinds of really fun stuff. Um, so I, being from an ag community, I believe like that really helped me become involved and understand the importance of involvement in a community itself. Um, I agree that being involved in different activities and clubs really helps um, start that in people. But I also really loved my teachers, um, like my English teacher and my history teacher especially, that encouraged us to share opinions and discuss different current event topics that related to what we were learning about. Because I think it encouraged people to think about why things happen and what their stance is. Um, and especially my senior class um, being able to vote in this presidential election. Our history teacher last year really tried to teach us um, how to know who we want to vote for and to get involved in politics and educate ourselves so that we can be educated voters. So I think it's really important that teachers encourage kids to speak out and discuss different topics so that they can know um, a lot of current events and what's going on in the world. Um, for me, uh, if I'm being honest, for schools planning for kids to be prepared for after school, I think we kind of struggle on it in the end. I mean, I get communication skills and everything like that's really good, but because I was into business, I was forcefully put myself into classes like personal finance, stuff like that, that taught you how to budget, how to do your taxes, things like that. But we do need more classes that it needs to be forcefully taught, like taxes, budget. You need to have a moral compass. I mean, there's certain things that certain kids we don't get taught. We kind of just get thrown out there and kind of get figured out. I mean, it's one way to do it. You can throw them in the deep end, but I just feel like there are certain things as a high schooler, as a school board that we could do is like making sure that kids that are about to graduate are just more prepared for some of the bigger things that are coming in life. Like they need to know the laws that they're going to have to abide to when they get out. I mean, when you're living with your parents, you don't worry about really anything that real life brings to you. And as soon as you get out, I mean, I moved out of my parents' house the minute I turned 18. That's just how it went. I needed to get out. I moved into a one bedroom cabin where I had a mini fridge and a microwave that I paid 75 bucks a month for. And it was just a way to start out. And once you get out and start doing that kind of stuff, you realize, I mean, 
no one really cares. I mean, you're just another person out there and there's just a lot of things that you're going to have to take care of yourself that the school doesn't really do. I mean, they kind of just baby you through it. And then once you get in the real world, you kind of just dive into it. And I think that's something that they should really reflect on a little bit more and kind of forcefully push into kids' heads more than other classes, I would suggest. Yeah, I really agree with that. I think a class that teaches life skills would be really beneficial in schools. I know we had an ACT prep class that the second semester after we'd taken the ACT and stuff, they did a few life skills things and touched on different things like public speaking and budgeting. But I honestly think that should be something almost required so that kids aren't passing through the system without learning those things just because they chose not to be in a class because it maybe didn't seem like fun and they wanted to do some other um, extracurricular instead. But I think that would be really important. So, so you felt like you were spent more time preparing for the a ACT than for uh, all of the other things that happen yeah, as soon as that happens. Yeah. When you're diving into like deep chemistry and stuff like that, but I still don't know how to do my taxes. I mean, like there are certain times I don't really need to know how to get to the sun. I really want to know how to fill out my taxes so I don't get arrested in a couple months. You know, it's things right. like that. Like there are certain things that I feel like we need to teach kids as a society that would make our society grow better just because as they come out, it should be something more of a common knowledge rather than something that you need to actually go and work on to know what you're doing. It should be something that when you're leaving high school, you should know what you're doing. It shouldn't be like you actually have to work at thinking about it. It should be a second, uh, sorry, I'm slipping right now. No, it no, this is exactly what we want. You want to do it and just roll with it and it shouldn't be a struggle to get through it. I, I, I love other ideas of if you could go back and improve high school and then do it again, what ideas would you make sure continue to happen for for you again or or that you would like to see again um, if I, I could, oh, go sorry. ahead sorry <laughs> no you go ahead i really think public speaking is important i think it's a skill that people lack when they leave high school and I mean, a lot of people are scared of it. It's like the number one fear in America is public speaking. But I think it's important for everybody to have to go through it because then they know how to communicate when they get into a job um, and they know how to communicate with people around them in every situation. Um, but also, I think I agree with Cole about, about filling out different forms and knowing how to write things. I think writing is another really important school skill that people leave school without being able to do. Um, personally, I set a goal for myself to fill out different scholarships and stuff my senior year so I could support myself financially. But I think that's something that was totally skipped over is how to fill out different things like that, how to look for opportunities, how to write good essays. I don't think we learned that in any of the cl my classes that I took. I had to kind of do that on my own. And so I think that would be really important too. Along with that, I also had no idea how to write an email when I left high school. Like, they're supposed to be formal, I guess. Yeah, had no idea. Sent my first email, like a text message to my professor when I got to college. He probably was like, who is this girl? But <laughs> yeah, figured that one out pretty quickly. <laughs> um, I would agree with Audrey and public speaking. Um, I was fortunate enough to do public speaking through FFA, but that was something in an extra extracurricular activity that I was interested in, and that was just a CDE involved. Um, so that's something that I personally got to do, or I was kind of pushed into doing. Um, freshmen have to do the creed, um, so that's something that we all kind of have to learn and present in front of everybody anyway. Um, I would agree that 99% of us really did not like that. Um, I, I really love public speaking. I had public speaking competitions and stuff, but I really, it, it taught me a lot. Um, it's a lot of confidence, really, in being able to talk to a group of people, much less one person. Um, formal emails, yes. <laughs> um, I, have to, <laughs> I have to write those every day at work, at least 10 a day. Um, and it's something now that I have, I have down, but it definitely does take a lot of work um, to kind of be able to communicate through people effectively through a screen and being professional. Um, it's something everyone has to learn how to do, and it's something that um, we were kind of pushed on in high school for, but I feel like it should be a mandatory thing if you're ever emailing a teacher, um, because I knew some students who did, who did kind of formal and some people who didn't. Um, it's, it's a way of communication, so you need to communicate effectively. Um, as far as everything else goes, um, I feel like just 
like reading a person to communicate with them effectively is another thing that um, kids, once they get out of high school, struggle with. They've never really had, to, some have never really had to talk to adults effectively other than their parents and family members to, to gather information or to present something or for an interview or any kind. So I feel like really learning how to talk to adults, a range of adults and different um, attitudes, um, all different kinds of things, and really being able to read a person, read a room, and be the best person that you can be to communicate effectively is something that kids struggle with a lot, Is, is maybe even over the phone. Um, in our capstone class, we had to call for interviews or call to get information for jobs or whatever, and some some of them did extremely not well. <laughs> and we kind of had a crash course run through before we did that because our teachers didn't want us to kind of sound stupid. And, and it didn't reflect well on them either or the school or anything. So we kind of got a crash through course on that stuff. But I feel like communicating effectively through any form of technology or just word of mouth would be mm -hmm. really beneficial. Yeah, I think job interview practice is a huge thing. We touched on it briefly in the second half of that ACT prep class, but um, I was fortunate enough to represent Wyoming as the Distinguished Young Woman of Wyoming, which is like a scholarship program um, that used to be the Junior Miss pageant. And I got to do tons of interview practice, and I think that helped me the most out of high school was all of that interview practice. I think that would be a really important thing to touch on in some of those types of classes too. Um, personally for me, I mean, I know a lot of my friends that I grew up with, they are not the best public speakers. Um, but growing up, I mean, every job I could, I was either a server trying to sell out food or, uh, I mean, I was a river rafting guide for a while. It's just, I was engulfed myself in just communicating with people. I just, if I can talk my way to it, I can usually, I mean, whoever I meet, if you just have a good conversation with them, usually if they're happy by the end of the conversation, I mean, you did your job right. And I didn't really struggle with that. Something that I did struggle with getting out is like they were saying about like making sure your emails look right and making sure that you're dressed properly and making sure, I mean, as much as we don't want to talk about it as a society and how we like image is a thing and how you look as a thing, you want to treat everybody equal. It really is. I mean, you want to go get a job, they're going to choose the guy in the suit versus the guy that pulls up in the shorts and they're going to choose the guy that their letter looks more formal and more straight and they just, there's a professionalism that needs to come with it when you get out of school that something that I definitely did not work on it in school. I, it was something I never even really thought of. I was a hockey player. I was greasy. I mean, I had all the confidence in the world. I could talk to anybody, but there was definitely that professionalism that I did not bring with myself, that it was kind of just, I laid back, didn't really have that much care to it. And now working at Wyotech, um, we have a lot of customers come in that since I've been working here, I've been doing really good with them. So I'm usually head of the line when I start working with customers that come with their actual cars. And with them, it is, you have to be professional. You have to be straight with them. You can't be slipping. You can't be kind of shady. You have to look the right part. I mean, every day our school's code is, I wake up every morning at 5 a.m. because every single morning I have to shower, shave, make sure my hair is clean, make sure all my clothes have no wrinkles in them. Like you have to look a certain way every single way because that professionalism carries out and people do look at that. So that's something that I definitely think kids at 18 should be working on, be taught more of that. There is a type of standard you need to hold yourself to when you go to do these things. Now, now, you guys are all here because you have graduated Wyoming schools, but there are some who did not. And so I'm curious, where do you think our system failed students who ended up not graduating or what could have been done differently to have more students graduate? Um, Go ahead. If being honest, I mean, it could sound a little rude, but when I went through school, I mean, the kids that didn't graduate, I mean, coming from another student that knew them since we were kids. I knew these kids probably weren't gonna graduate since middle school. I mean, there are certain times the school system really does. I mean, Cody was a great school system. They really gave all the help they could and just really did anything they could to get the kids there. I mean, I am great at math and science. I really, really suck at English and writing. And my English teachers, I mean, if it wasn't for them, if they weren't so nice and helped me so much, I definitely would not have made it through high school. I mean, I really thought they did everything they could to help me through and they were great. And the kids that don't make it, I honestly, I mean, not everybody's gonna make it. I mean, there's personal problems that come in at that kind of aspect and stuff like that. But I mean, every kid that put in at least 50% effort in my school made it through. Like there was kids that shouldn't have made it through that did. And that's something that I think that, like I was saying earlier, why I mean kind of almost babies us through it. So that when you get in the real world, you kind of get smacked. 
it's because mm-hmm. we really do want kids to get through high school. I mean, we want that graduation, but the thing is, is like if you baby them through that graduation, when they do graduate, it is going to hit them harder. So, I mean, there's that fine line, right? That you're that she was saying about making sure that you are hard on them so that they do have that work ethic and that want to drive to get it done, but not enough that they're just going out there and just getting sat on their butt and just don't know what's going on. Yeah, and I think with that fine line um, between babying people and making sure that they get through it, some of that responsibility, I think, falls on the teachers. Um, Instead of trying to make their course look the hardest or prove themselves by not passing kids because they wanted to make their tests so hard, making sure that kids do learn the materials and pass through the class knowing things, that doesn't mean not making them do the work necessarily, but just ensuring that they're getting through learning stuff and not just passing or failing. I think that the kids that don't make it through high school just don't like school and or and and I'm sure there's personal things going on behind the scenes but I don't think there's much at school that you could do differently like there's so many things that you offer they have to find something that they enjoy in high school and if they don't enjoy anything in high school that's when they don't make it through. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like something that could be improved to ensure that happens less um, would be implementing kind of like a, maybe not implementing a reward system, but making being successful and doing well a good thing. Maybe not fun, but definitely rewarding. Um, because you can, I, th- I believe essentially you can make some everybody, anybody like school if you create one reason for them to like it. Um, and whatever that may be, whether it's a group, a sport, um, friends, teachers, um, even a reward system, um, knowing that there's something successful for you to do and produce later on. Um, because honestly, like high school, GED, that standard is kind of necessary in today's world. And for them to understand that and want that and to get that um, can be hard for some, but I feel like maybe a reward system that makes learning and succeeding um, truly like in their eyes, like definitely needed and like, a, I, don't, I don't know, let's see, like oh. appropriate. Yeah, like for sure a thing that they need. Because I believe that the kids that don't make it through high school believe that they don't need it. And sadly, you, you kind of, you kind of do. <laughs> so I do. Mm -hmm. So I feel like implementing a way for everyone to understand, even those that kind of don't in the very beginning, that that's needed and it's a good thing to have no matter how hard or how much you don't fit in. Um, There needs to be something there for everybody. And there's, and I'm not sure what that is, but I feel like a rewarding system or a rewarding feeling would be something that would be for those kids. So if you were to grade your your high school, A, B, C, D, F, what grade would you give your Wyoming high school? Cole? If I'm being honest, I had some amazing teachers. Uh, there's people that have influenced me in my life. I mean, even on just like basic decisions I make day to day and my morals and stuff like that. I mean, I had some great people around me and they really were good about getting the information across. I do think we babied a lot of kids and like there's some kids now that did make it through high school that are definitely just kind of getting sat down right now that just don't even know what to do with themselves. I mean, I have friends that I hate to see it. But I mean, they're living off the government check to check. They're living in a really small house. They can't really do anything and they don't go to work every day. And they just, they're so overwhelmed with the world right now that it's like, they just kind of have already given up. And I mean, he graduated high school. He's someone that isn't the type of person. I mean, he was able to accomplish a degree from high school. He shouldn't just want to give up after. He should want to go do more. And that's the kind of stuff, I mean, it. you hate to see it. I mean, you grew up with these kids, you love them like a brother and then you see that kind of stuff. and. You're like, you achieved this much. You should have at least pushed harder to go get a decent job. You should have at least tried this. I mean, there are certain times, I mean, I would give them a B plus just because I think okay. they would te- te- teach the information great. I just think it's almost too lenient just because of what happens. After. But not fully prepared. I kind of like not fully prepared for all of life outside of the content yeah. area. Like, I mean, getting the information across, like we were saying on the question before, in the end, it's really just up to if the person wants it or not. I mean, you can tell every kid 
you need high school. You need high school. But the kids that want to drop out, every time you tell them they need something, they don't want to listen. They're like, okay, and they just kind of shoot you off. In the end, it's going to be if that person wants to learn or not. I mean, honestly, after going to Wyotech, if I wanted to go back to Northwest and go again at that degree, I 100% know I could definitely get through those classes with a B or an A just because going in and wanting to actually take in the information versus going in and forcefully taking in the information just to get through the class are two very different things that is just, it's in the end, it's up to if you want it or not. And that's just something that you can't really teach. I mean, they're going to want it eventually. So you just got to kind of let them figure it out. It's one of the hardest things in life, but it happens. It's just not much you can do about it. Danielle, what would you grade your high school? This is a hard one. Okay, so I think that my high school for me was amazing. Like I ended up having the best high school experience. There's not very many complaints that I have. So personally for like kids like me and kids that are motivated, kind of like Cole was saying, my high school has an A plus, like they did great for those kind of kids. I think for some kids, it's harder to like motivate them because they don't want to learn kind of like Cole was saying. And so if those kids don't want to learn, I mean, it's harder to teach them. And I think my high school didn't provide as much for them as it did for kids like me. So I'm right around that same area, B, B plus. Overall. Ariane? Um, honestly, going back to my senior year, I started to get really frustrated with the school system because kids that don't seem to be motivated may have something going on behind the scenes where they were brought up in a way where they never were, had to be motivated. And I think that the school systems push standardized testing so much that kids that maybe are better with their hands feel that they're stupid and they can't succeed in life because they can't do well on a standardized test. Um, I know my brother is a genius when it comes to working with his hands and building things, but when it comes to schoolwork, he can't turn in assignments because he just has problems sitting down in the classroom and learning um, with it, just his mind and a piece of paper. So I think it's really important to um, try to help all of the kids and not just say, well, you can't pass this standard, so you're going to suck in life and you can't succeed, you know? And I think it's hard because everybody's different. Everybody has different learning styles, but I think it'd be better, best to try to accommodate those that learn more hands-on um, to try to push um, outside of high school different ways to go on and pursue jobs, not just going to college um, and taking tests and all that stuff. So honestly, at the end of the day, I would give my school C in that area because I was really frustrated with kids like that who went through high school thinking that they were gonna suck in life because they couldn't pass a test. Abilene? Um, I, would, I truly believe I'd give my school a, like an A minus. Um, thinking about like what Aubrey and talked about, um, students that were way better with their hands um, versus in school. So kids who didn't want to go to college because they weren't interested or knew that that's kind of what they weren't meant to do um, were kids that threw our capstone class, honestly, <laughs> again, going back to that. Um, we really pushed them to do whatever they wanted to do. We had kids who presented like their 30 minute like presentation at the end of the year. Um, presented about going and working on a rig because that's what they wanted to do. And this is why they wanted to do it. And this is um, the benefits that it has for them. And this is how much they're gonna get paid and what they're gonna do with that. And if they stay with it, what they can do in 10, five, 15, 20 years with it. Um, that's maybe that's where they wanna start. Kids who wanted to go to Job Corps, um, kids who wanted just to go get a job as soon as they graduated. Um, we really pushed those kids to do what they wanted to do. If you, we didn't tell them that college is necessary because for some people it's not. Um, and you're gonna, why would you put yourself somewhere that you don't wanna be? And college is expensive, no matter kind of where you go. If you go to a community college, if you go to a university, if you kind of go to a secondary school in general, it's it's expensive. Um, mm -hmm. So, we, I was really impressed and really happy with seeing my classmates present at the end of the year with doing exactly what they wanted to do, because you could see that they were passionate about it. Even if they had no idea what they were wanted, what they wanted to do, they knew that what they thought they wanted to do wasn't it, and they had an idea of where they wanted to go. 
and honestly, for the kids that in middle school, early high school, that would get mad in a class saying like, I'm never gonna use this, I hate this. They kind of like fully took that and instead of just being mad about that, they just accepted that and wanted to apply that to the real world and getting a job, um, doing what they wanted. And sometimes that wasn't college. So I, I really loved that because lots of my classmates did exactly what they wanted to do. And that is so cool. There, of course, there's some that kind of fell through the cracks, but um, the ones that I'm still in good contact with or I have on social media, I can remember what their presentation was and I'm like, wow, you're, you're doing it. And that's so cool because we were so prepared and we kind yeah. of knew exactly what we wanted to do. Now see each other doing it exactly. And that's, that's pretty cool. So I would grade, grade my school as like an AA minus. Well, I, I, I could continue discussing and, and talking with you guys all all morning. I am so appreciative of what you've shared. Um, I have a page full of notes, uh, just so you kind of know what, what my takeaways are. Um, teachers make a difference, I think. I think all of you spoke to an individual teacher who has impacted your life, and that's something I think we can all celebrate. Um, being involved is important. You guys talked about National Honor Society, FBLA, FFA, as ways that you gained additional experience or opportunities to know about the broader world. And so I think that is really important. This capstone project that you had, Abilene, seems to have been extremely valuable in helping you. And it looks like some other schools could, have, could benefit from giving students that focused opportunity to investigate. Um, also, uh, not, not everyone's destined for university, and, and that's okay. And I think um, being able to discover that earlier is better. I think, Cole, if you would have been able to find that passion earlier, but maybe that lesson through Northwestern was valuable as well. Um, yeah, that, probably would have saved my parents a couple heart attacks, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, learning is important, but but some of that preparation for some of that adult life seems like you've had to learn it on your own outside of school. And so uh, budget taxes, so you don't get arrested, Cole. I hope you get those in by April 15th. Um, but those, those would have been valuable too. Uh, communication is really important. And that was something that wasn't as em emphasized as, as it should have been. And, and that the schools are working to reach students, but, but we haven't reached all students to give them that. I liked what you said, Abby, that create the one reason that they will want to show up for some students that might be missing, including maybe focus on standardized testing, Aubrey Ann, and, and not celebrating those, those who are gifted with their hands because we need those people too. Is there anything I'm missing that out of that kind of quick summary that you want to make sure that the board takes away? Um, so I might do an effect with what Abilene just said is like the hands-on thing. I mean, personally, I mean, I'm a wild tech student. I am much better with my hands. Learning in person, seeing it in person is huge. And if I'm being honest, if you guys are trying to like get better numbers with the students in Wyoming, you really got to start looking at the kids that are, I mean, the troubled kids, the struggling kids. Um, and those are the kids, I mean, I kind of lost where I was going with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just kind of spaced on it. I'm so sorry. No worries. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Trustee Mickelson had something he wanted to jump in and and share. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I did want to echo your comments. It has been uh, very edifying to hear how important those teacher relationships are, how important those extracurriculars are, and how the needs of our student body are both diverse and, and not being met in all cases. Um, I want to make sure that the board recognizes that uh, hockey is the best game that you can name. And that, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, uh, yeah uh, that. <laughs> that, that, it, that is clearly the most critical thing that we can offer in every district. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it was when, when you all were discussing how those extracurricular activities contributed to and made your educational experience so much more meaningful. Uh, what I kept 
waiting to hear was this was the curriculum that really did it for me, um, or this was the standard or the performance level descriptor that made the difference in my <laughs> life. And uh, I think we can all note that those, those things were not there, that that is not what made the impact and not what kept you connected and involved. And uh, while that was something that I suspected, I certainly appreciate your time and your confirmation. So thank you all. Absolutely. Um, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Yes, Catherine. Uh, I I would like to say uh, thank you. I I have just sat here and listened to the uh, to what you have uh, all of you have had to say. And the one thing that I would like to say to you is I I guess what I did not realize about uh, young people people like you in your in your early twenties is how much empathy and how much recognition you have about the students that uh, uh, that were not successful in your high schools or any or junior high or elementary even. And I think that's a wonderful thing uh, to recognize. But also, um, I know that we, we, we fall down in education oftentimes with that type of a student. But there is a question I'd like to ask is, how have you ever had any contact with those uh, programs that uh, are available or should be available that would help some of those students um, come back in to either get their GED or their high school diploma so that uh, maybe they feel better about themselves or if they want to go into a certain field, uh, then they're able to. So do you know anything about those programs or have you seen anything in your districts concerning those? Um, I'm not sure I, on the high school level, but I know here at Northwest College, there are a lot of non-traditional students, um, older people coming back for degrees and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm a part of the TRIO program, which is unfortunately only open to um, financially need, needing students. But they do a lot of work with um, these types of kids in college, helping them through the process, trying to provide them different resources, tutors, and focusing on those kids that usually would fall through the cracks at the college level too. But I know in high school, we had a teacher that worked with kids um, with different learning disabilities, and she would help them. And I think, oh, I can't remember the name of the program, uh, Gear Up, that they would use, yeah. but I'm not sure who qualifies for that or how um, they have kids in, in that program, but I know that that helped some of those types of students. But uh, anyway, you're going, uh, I would just like to say thank you uh, for giving us a point of view that we needed to have and that I wish you well and uh, in your future endeavors. Thank you again. Trustee Bellish. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks to um, all of you guys who are providing us with this other perspective. I'll echo what they all said. You know, here's what stood out to me, something that has um, been a part of my life for a long time, which is this idea of how do we define success? And what you guys said, and, and I like this idea of um, across three dimensions, success is a combination of results, relationships, and processes. And you guys talked about that all morning. You talked about, we need to know how to do these things, the processes. You talked about relationships you had with teachers and how to have relationships with other people. And Cole can, could sell anybody, you know, uh, ice to a Eskimo kind of thing, right? And you, and you talked about results, that not all results are the same. And it doesn't have to always rely on a standardized test. So um, thank you for uh, just uh, providing more for me to continue to think about success in those three areas and um, how that's important for our entire educational system. Thanks everybody. Uh, Trustee Chamber. Hi, I, I just wanna thank all of you for coming and visiting with us today. I think it's been really valuable and, and I'm really super impressed with every single one of you. 
Um, I see really bright futures for you. And I, I hope that you continue in your life to influence those people that you're asking or you're hoping that the schools can influence as well. Because I really do believe it takes more than just a school. It takes good families. It takes good friends. And so I, I hope down the road that you guys have an opportunity to um, provide some student maybe who's not quite motivated for school some ideas of how they can be successful. So thank you all very much and good luck. Uh, Trustee McLeod would like to thank you. Dan? I like what, you know, Robin had a point. Each one of you, it's been phenomenal to listen to you. And, and Ryan, I'm going to like to sit and talk all day with all of you. But Robin had a point, and I'm sure the teachers in the room have a statistic. But if you, if you tell 20 kids, 20 of your friends, that they need to work harder or push harder, or try and get out of high school or any of that, if one of them listens, you've made a difference. And, and again, I'm sure there's statistics for that. But what the things that I've heard about the voting, uh, being told that you're gonna have to work hard to get to the next step if that's what you wanna do, uh, about the financial, the taxes, all these things are great stuff. And I don't, if we had time for a couple more questions, I would ask each of you a question. Number one, uh, Who's your mentor? Either a mentor from the past or a direction you want to go in the future, someone you want to be like, who would that be? And the other question would be to each of one of you to think about what do you want to do? Do you want to be that business owner? Do you want to work that 100 hour a week? Do you want, do you want to face all the financial challenges? Do you want to be an entrepreneur or do you want to be an entrepreneur, which is someone who uh, functions and progresses a rock star inside of someone else's company. Those are things to think about would be my suggestion for your future, but it's been outstanding to listen to y'all. And uh, I'm sure every one of you are gonna make a difference. Thanks mm -hmm. for, for being here this morning, appreciate it. Absolutely, we'll, we'll let you guys have the final thoughts if there's anything that you want to make sure we hear one more time or hear for the first time. But truly thank you from on behalf of the State Board for your time and your perspective and, and we are excited to see your bright future. Um, I just want to say thanks for the opportunity to le for letting us express our thoughts and opinions on our experiences and everything but I just want to say it's important that you keep trying to improve the system and really focusing on what you can improve. I think that's the most important step. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and coming from a guy that seriously struggled with a lot of high school and that kind of stuff, I mean, I do appreciate you guys listening to us, letting us get our opinions out there and hopefully making a difference on what happens in the next following years with students coming up. Kind of want to just say that Clearly all of us had that special teacher or a couple of them that made our high school experience um, really beneficial for us. Um, and they challenged us in ways that like made us successful here. And I have a feeling that in my high school, that teacher for a lot of kids is the same teacher. And so I think one thing our education system could benefit from is really motivating our teachers to motivate the other students. Because I think if, each teacher wanted to reach at least a few students, almost every student would be reached in the high school system. I would agree. Um, I really appreciate the chance to be able to come and talk. Um, and I'm really glad I got to see um, other people who graduated the same time I did and doing things that they want to do, because that's awesome. And I know one of them um, that I have known for a couple of years. So, um, I guess if I could push anything, it would be to start preparing us earlier because um, I wrote, like Ms. Clapp said to Ms. Garcia and Mr. Sennett, my English teachers, um, a couple of weeks ago because I truly appreciated them and what they did for me. Um, I feel like if we would have started earlier, I not that I didn't like Ms. Garcia or Mr. Sennett because they're watching and they're here, um, but I feel like I would have appreciated them and exactly all the stuff that they're making me do a lot sooner because I would have seen it. I would have seen it work. I would have seen a change in myself. Um, 
So I feel like the things that we talked about, like getting like tax forms, budgeting, the things that basically I learned in my personal finance class my first semester here, if we could have implemented that sooner, um, we would truly appreciate and love and grow like a bigger connection with each other that we're graduating with, lower classmen, teachers, if we can truly appreciate what we give to each other, because sometimes you don't until you leave. Um, you don't see that. You don't see the relationships you had with your friends. Um, you don't see the relationship you had with your parents. You don't see the relationship you had with teachers and the system until after you leave. So I would, I would start implementing things that we're going to use and need earlier so we could we are comfortable and we appreciate the things that we have because that just helps you get through high school and get through school and get through all that stuff much easier and it's more fun. Well, on that point, if, if there is something that you think about or you want to keep the conversation going, please reach out to, to myself or, or Dr. Clapp with, with those ideas because we are embarking on what's called profile of a graduate. We are trying to take a, a real holistic look at the system and ask what we're doing well and what we can do better. And so your voices are adding to that and, and really starting the conversation off. And so we are, again, so appreciative of your time. Thank you for joining the state board today. Good luck to you all. And Mr. Thank Chairman, you. if I may add, thank you for your yeah. extended time. We kept you much longer than I had estimated. And so we thank you for persevering with us. Cole, I hear great things are ahead. Your graduation's just around the corner and off to Texas.